I want to talk about a guy who I think you could argue is an elite player at this point. He's kind of someone who everyone agrees is a very good player, but I don't know if we really talk about him uh, in the you know way that we probably should, which is a Cooper Cup type. I mean, that's really where he kind of is right right now. Let's start off with this play as a good example of showing really what he can do and why he can thrive so well. This is really where he is at his best as not as an outside receiver, but as someone who is, you know, on this play, the number two receiver. There's a receiver closer to, towards the sideline than he is. So that's the way that this works. He's just going to be running a quick route underneath. But these routes are very important. And if you can find ways to get yards in these routes, what does it matter if it's being an outside threat or an inside threat? Getting yards is getting yards. And it's kind of a, a pick play, really, where you're going to have a tight end kind of try to clear out some space for him. Right when this play begins, though, you're going to see that he does start to move closer towards the inside. And there definitely is a window that, you know, that pick is definitely helping him. And I think he's going to use that to his advantage. Watch him be able to get over. He makes the catch, turns the corner, and picks up a first down right there. I think there's kind of a, you know, a lot of people kind of look at those plays and say, okay, how impressive is that really, though? Because, you know, you're not winning on the outside. You're you're kind of in it. You know, it's an easy angle for the quarterback to make the throw. You don't have to get as much separation. I've always kind of viewed it differently, though. I always kind of view it as like... If you're getting yards and you're moving the ball down the field and doing it consistently, I don't care how you're doing it. I don't care if it's, you know, you close your eyes and just do cartwheels and then somehow the you know ball gets thrown your way and you catch it. Whatever. If you're getting the ball and getting the ball down the field, what's the difference if you're an outside threat or a slot receiver? I love this next play. This is a great example of showing really what, why, uh, I think it's just a great example of what, uh, the, the faith that Goff had in Amon Ross St. Brown. That's the way I want to phrase it. Um, you know, he really trusted him, and this is a perfect example to show it off, where it's going to be a play action, and just so you know beforehand, it's going to really work. The play action, it's a, you know, looks like it's supposed to be a cover three zone that the Bills are in, but they're going to get way out of position. Also worth noting, Amon Ross St. Brown, not an inside receiver on this play. He is the receiver closest towards the sideline. So take, you know, take note of that as the corner on that side of the field is paying attention to St. Brown here. Watch how one this play begins. You see that, you know, uh, as it starts to develop, okay, clearly the over the middle route should be the one that Goff is going to look towards, right? That seems obvious. Obvious. That's where Goff should you know pay attention to, and Goff sees this too. It's not like Goff is just locked on one read and that's an issue. It seems like Goff just legitimately feels like Amon Ross St. Brown is about to get open, and he'd rather have the ball in Amon Ross St. Brown's hands than anyone else's. Watch, as you see, he still decides to throw it to St. Brown, who makes the catch and hey, uh, makes a guy miss and picks up some yards right there, which is part of why Goff wanted the ball in St. Brown's hands. Was that the right read by Goff? I'll let you be the judge, but it goes to show just what the faith that they have in St. Brown and how much he means to that team. I really do think that if they didn't have St. Brown, there's no way that offense is anywhere near as productive as it was last year. You also have stuff like this, which is just him winning. Again, that's the kind of thing you like about him is he just consistently finds ways to win. And at the end of the day, that's a receiver's job. Get separation and get separation consistently. If you're in the NFL, you can get separation. But what separates the good players from the elite ones is the guys who can consistently do it. The way this play is designed to work for St. Brown, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he's going to be running a route closer towards the sideline. That's how this is going to work. But first, watch how he, uh, watch the first step, and watch how he just gets off the line of scrimmage here. Watch him kind of fake as though he's going towards his right, but then gets basically straight down the field to where he's able to get well past the Buffalo Bills corner who's trying to cover him. And what's especially fascinating about this play is while he's trying to cover St. Brown, uh, he's further behind. But St. Brown, even though he kind of faked as though he was going one way and went another way, he still has yet to give away where the end of his route is going. He could cut over the middle, he could continue running deep, or he could cut towards the uh, sideline, or maybe something else. He has completely uh, not shown his hands, despite the fact that he made a lot of moves to get himself to this position, and got into this position quickly. So then when he cuts towards the sideline, he also cuts so well, he, again, gets an easy window for Goff to make that type of play. And what makes this so difficult difficult uh, a guy like St. Brown to cover is that, you know, he's this elite receiver, but he's this elite receiver that plays out of the slot, which means how do you defend that? A lot of teams don't like to put their number one corner in that situation, but really 
you should when you're playing against the Lions. And the reality is, when you have a player that kind of forces teams to do different things and forces teams to do things they're not comfortable doing, that's a win just in itself. Forget about all the other value he adds. That alone is a pretty big win. You also have something like this, which again is going to be a pretty pretty similar uh, example. But this one, I think, will really showcase his... Uh, less about his route running and more about his just his ability to cut in general where watch what happens right when this play begins he's going to get a little bit of outside leverage but for the most part has not gained any separation I mean to the point where I believe the defensive back covering him is literally touching him right now there is contact being made so yeah that's zero separation right here that being said you don't necessarily need separation before you cut, right? If you cut well enough, then, I mean, you know, it kind of even seems clear that you're, he's going to cut towards the top of the screen. That's that's what I would guess if I'm just looking at it right now is that he would cut towards the sideline. But look at how well he cuts toward the corner, just, you know, gives up that little bit of space. That wasn't a ton of space. That wasn't bad coverage, but he was still wide open due to the great uh, cutting that... Amon Ross St. Brown has, and these are just the types of things that makes him a borderline elite player. And also stuff like this, you know, I think uh, for whatever reason, I'm always more fascinated when guys can win against man coverage. But like I said earlier, getting yards is getting yards. doesn't matter how you do it. If you're getting the ball down the field, then you're doing a good job. And I think there really is an art to zone coverage that kind of gets uh, underrated uh, a lot of times where, you know, Something like this, I think, is a great example of really why uh, someone who can be great in zone coverage can really help your football team. This play, it's going to be a zone coverage play, obviously. It'd be weird if I set all that up and then it was man. Uh, no, cover three zone. His route seems to be a pretty simple route. Just kind of underneath, uh, you know, get into maybe a gap in coverage a little bit more underneath. Pretty simple stuff. And right when this play begins, you see that that's kind of how it looks to be setting up. You see that there is uh, maybe a small window if Goff decides to make this throw right now now but St. Brown kind of reads this play and realizes wait a second the linebacker who is a little bit further towards the bottom of the screen than St. Brown currently is he's starting to creep up towards the top of the screen so St. Brown notices this watch him sidestep to the other side where he's then wide open and you know uh if he didn't slip right there maybe he even went down was afraid he's about to get his head taken off which would be a fine thing to do but there was a chance he could have gotten a touchdown even though he didn't get the touchdown, set up a first and goal at the five-yard line. You'll certainly take that. And it's just a smart play by St. Brown. There, Like I said, there's a real art to these types of plays. So yeah, that's something that I really like about St. Brown. And it's the fact that he does this stuff consistently that I think is really optimistic uh, and really exciting if you're a Lions fan. Is he elite? I think it'd be reasonable to say that he was elite last year, but maybe you want to see another year of him before you're willing to give him that crown because, you know, we have seen plenty of receivers have one elite year, but maybe not consistently do that. St. Brown could be the guy who is elite, but maybe let's see it for one more year. I think that'd be reasonable to say, but, you know, is he borderline elite? Yeah, I'll, I'll give him uh, that. I'll give him that compliment, I suppose. But yeah, uh, St. Brown, incredible player. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.